So welcome to the start of the 2041 season. My name is Paul Osnon the Northman and thank you so so much for the continued support on this series. As I'm recording this I've just passed a thousand subscribers as well so thank you so so much. Please make sure you do go down in the comments below and just type I am watching and then if you do have anything else to say during the, se during the episode please put that in a separate comment. The I am watching comment is specifically for that YouTube algorithm letting them know that people who watch my content are enjoying it enough to go down and comment. Please make sure you do go down and drop a like on it as well. Um, I'm going to do something I've not done in a while. I'm going to set 20 likes on this video as a target. Now, if we get over 20 likes, see if you can blow that away. But my target is 20 likes. If 20 of you can go down and drop a like on this video. Um, we're in 2041, the season we're going to be doing today. So if we can get 20 likes on that, I'm blown away for a channel who... My channel only started properly like releasing content ready for this FM23. So this is going to be the final season where I'm doing this video halfway through the season. Um, from 2042... This episode will only show before the season starts, I think. Um, and maybe, maybe, if we're still in Europe, I will fit in the European stuff, but we won't show anything else outside the European games until the end of season review. So, getting into it, we've got some players in the FIFA, FIFA Pro, FIFA Under-18s again. Um, so we have our new signing, Bjornstad Horgan. Been with us for half the season. Very, very talented player potential-wise. Six and a half million we paid for him, but I do think we paid well. I just think he has the potential to be a very, very good player. In the under-19s, Sterler is on the bench after last year again in the under-18 team. He's now on the bench for this one. We paid four and a half million for Sterler, but at the age of 19 now, I just think he... I mean, ignore the fact a few are on decline at the end of the season. He could be a very, very good player. In terms of the Danish team of the year, Michan was selected in there in attack and mid. Um, another decent season last year, obviously 10 goals, 11 assists have gone into the Danish team of the year. So looking at how the Europa League has gone then, we end up finishing in ninth place. Missing out on the top eight, just very disappointing. Missed out on goal difference. We end up winning five, drawing two, losing one. So we managed to beat Austria Wien, Lech Poznan, Slava Prague and SJK. And then also Michelin as well. Drawing against Basel and Rennes. Our only defeat in the group stage was against Brescia. Um, absolutely insane to think that we finished in the Europa League, not the conference, the Europa League in ninth place. And that took us through into the knockout rounds. So in the knockout round, we got drawn against Joe Gordons of Sweden and we got a 2-1 victory away from home with uh, Little Skara and Midskugan on the score sheet before they came back to the fair rounds and the game finished 2-2, which saw us go through 4-3 on aggregate. So we were through to the round of 16 of the Europa League. Now we got drawn against Brescia and we lost the game 1-0 at home in the first leg. Really disappointing. Uh, 10 shots to 16. It was a fairly even game, but we just unfortunately fell short. And in the second leg, 15 shots to 8, 12 on target to 3. We lost the game 4-0. I don't think it was a 4-0 game, but we definitely didn't deserve to win. But this round of 16 in the Europa League, I would say, is our most successful season in Europe to date. Now, I actually made some notes of how we've done in previous seasons. So, I've got my paper here. The UEFA Champions League group stages, we've been in six times. The Europa League, we've been in five times in the group stages, making it to the knockout rounds three times. So three out of the five times we've been, we've got into the knockouts. Conference League, we've been in the group stage twice, both times making it through to the knockouts. Now we got to the last 16 in the Conference League, and we've now got to the last 16 in the Europa League. So I'm absolutely delighted that we made it into the last 16 blown away i do think it shows we are progressing we've just got a whole run of the players we've got keep pushing and i honestly believe we are moving in the right direction now heading forward to the next european campaign which is about to start for me as i'm recording this obviously halfway through the season but 
I am confident. So in terms of the players who have helped us there, we've spent big. We've spent 22 million going into this season. Um, so the first player coming in was a player who I actually agreed to sign last season, but it just took a while for him to come in, is a good Munda Ingolfsson. Now, he's playing for our B team this year. He is a defensive midfielder in my eyes. He's a decent player, nor again the fact that some attributes are dropping down. I don't believe they are. Um, in fact, I think... No, I can't. I was going to say, I thought I can remove that. Whatever. Either way, he's a decent player. 19 years old. Doesn't count as a foreign player. He had a good season in Belgium. So he did deserve to come to us. And he is doing really well for our B team. 7.38 average. He's settling into the fair rounds nicely. Now coming in for 10.25 million is Marcelo Viotti. Now, these are the first signings who I have spent big, big money on. And... I think he has a lot of potential. When you're signing them players from countries like Argentina, etc., you have to spend the money. You have to spend the money. And we've done it. And I honestly think he could develop into a very, very talented player. And yes, it's big money. But I honestly think we could make the money back if we did want to sell him. And the next player coming in hasn't broken into our first team yet. Who's joined us on a fringe contract for 10.5 million. Defensive midfielder again. Six foot and mentally insane, technically decent and physically very good, and he's only 19. So I honestly believe he could be a fantastic defensive midfielder for us. And then the final sign it comes on a free transfer now. He was signed because he made it into the either under 18s or under 20, under 18s or under 19 world player of the season. Um, so we picked him up, he's a winger. He's not bad, you know, and the fact that he the fact that he was in the best under eighteens in the world as a Latvian on a non contract, I just had to pick him up. We paid nothing for him. He's playing for our under eighteens. We'll move up in our B team for next season. If he develops into someone who's a rotation for the league games, fantastic. If not, we're going to make money on him. Hundred percent. So in terms of players who have left, first off, Rabi has left. Now, never got a chance in our first team. Was a B team player who we picked up, and um, we paid two hundred fifteen k for him to come play for our B team. Sold him for one point three million plus fifty percent of next sale. I never planned on selling him, but I also wasn't sure where he would fit into us long term. So I honestly think it's a good sale. So he has left. Uh, Paulson's gone on loan to Vester. Um, some other big, 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 bigger players who have gone out. So Wolf, one of our back of wingers, has gone on loan to AGF. Um, we've got sixty k fee for that. Uh, Extra, one of our left wingers has gone. Now this is a player who actually had a lot of faith could actually become a first team player this year, but we've ended up letting him go out on loan, and we paid two and a half million for him. So I didn't really want to get rid of him, but a loan deal came in where they've paid two hundred ten k. Um, there's an optional of a million. It works out we get our money back. I know it says loan, future fee, one million optional. It works out we get our money back at some point. So we will end up making profit on him. Um, Cookie has gone on loan into Australia to Sydney FC. Again, a player who just didn't want to be at the club anymore. And the fact he refused to play for the Fair Islands made me not like him so much. Um, you can see. So, 15 games a year. And this is roughly where he stopped wanting to play for the Fair Islands. So, we end up um, going, do you know what? I'm not going to use you as much now. Um, the next player to go out on loan is Haddad. Again, hasn't featured much for us. Um, six games for the first team since coming in. Uh, Jordan International gone out on loan. Uh, Rui Samuelson's gone on loan to Lingby. The guy we picked up from Crawley Town a few years ago. So, again, a lot of players going out on loan. And going back to Poland, to Pogan, is a player who I think we paid quite a bit of money. No, we paid 160 k he had a few games for our B team, not too many really. Had a decent season here before he's ended up going back to Poland. So we wish him well. I picked him up when he was only 17 with the hope he would develop. He just never developed into what I wanted. So we've, we've made a loss on him. Um, I have actually made more notes because I'm in the middle of making a video 
where I compare how the club does with a lot of money compared to me being as manager. Um, kind of like a, a alternate reality style video. Um, actually, that video is already out. That video came out on Friday. This video comes out on the Monday. So go and check that out. But um, so since we took over as manager, we have sold... 108 million pounds worth of players and we have actually spent now 20 sorry 89 million after this 22 million here 89 million so we are what's that 18 that's 19 including the half we're about just under 20 million in profit as manager ab i would like to actually make that more i actually would like to make that more when it comes to transfers uh, we have 29 million in the bank Another thing to point out are that the board are in the process of upgrading our training facilities. You can see improving training facilities is in progress. It takes about five months. We have just signed a new five-year contract this year as well. I'm still getting this crap. Um, where they, they, they call a meeting to say, we really want to increase the wages of performance analysis. And you're like, I don't care. So you just kind of go, yeah, do you know what? Let's do that. That's a great idea. I mean, I want more coaches, but we can't afford that. But let's pay our performance and analysis a little bit more. <sighs> so in terms of how it's gone in the league, we, we've been we've been solid. We've had a couple of mishaps. We conceded three goals against NSI here. Uh, it was a bit annoying. So in the following game, I put 11 goals past them just, just to remind them who's boss. But, um, yeah, we, we're fairly solid. We've won every game apart from one, which was at home to Vester, which we drew 0-0, nil -nil, and I can't quite answer why. I think we just decided not to play football. Now, I have been developing a new tactic. We are trying to create this style of tactic um, as an option when we go to the big teams in the Champions League. Um it's not working too well at the minute, but I'm still trying to get to grips with it and understand the best way to get it to work better. But um, our tactics looking fairly strong this season. Uh, we do have a couple of players who are getting really, really touted around. Uh, Bjorn Stad Hager, who we obviously paid six and a half million. We looked at him at the start of the videos he's made into the under 18s of the world, and. Um, he is wanted by a few teams, by Leverkusen, Brighton, Cardiff, I've just realised my green screen moved along, that was a bit weird, um, Glassback, Hanover, Leicester, PSV and Schalke are after him. Uh, Lethal Scar is wanted again by Michland and Stuttgart. Um, now bear in mind that if we ended up selling him, we would have had paid 2.6, sold for 10.5, bought back for 1.9, if, if somebody wants to pay over 10 million, I'll sell him again. But I'm not selling him for under 10 million because he is actually a goal scorer. But we are very, very strong. We are very, very strong. Now, someone I want to point out is Henry Pereira. Started the season in our B team, uh, played the first game, has since played seven games in the league for us and is pretty much one of our first choice central defenders now. Um, he's just performing very, very well. I would like him to learn how to head the ball better. Um, in fact, actually, we could select that on now, just make sure we don't forget. Get him to do that. That would be very nice. Another thing to point out is Mishan. We did discuss in one of the previous videos some comments suggested to get him training the tries killer balls more often. So he is trying that. Um, also, he does like to run with the ball and dictate the tempo. So I have added to move in the channels. I'd already told him to run from position, but I'm just trying to get him to move around. Just go where he wants, do whatever he wants, dictate the game. Um, Midskugan and Bjornstad are coming inside, so if he's moving out, I'm happy for that. I really am happy for that. But as a whole, we're looking really, really solid so far this season. Um, in terms of top goal scorers, it's Lidl Scarrow with 20 and 19 starts. Midskugan has 14 already this season. Now, last season he was in, well, last couple of years, 15 in 15 the season before, four assists. This season, sorry, it's last season, I'll get there in the end, 18 goals in 19. This season he has 13 in 12. So Andre Midskugan from the left wing has just been insane. Attribute-wise, I wouldn't say he's the best in the world. 
But he is just insane. 25 years old now, I think. Yeah, he's away in the paperwork to actually become a fairwise national player. Now, he's already been capped by Norway. Norway doesn't count as a foreign nation in terms of registration. It doesn't matter so much. But, I mean, it's nice to see, isn't it? If anything, it's nice to see. In terms of some other players who want us, Sterler is wanted by Hertha Berlin. Uh, one of our backup players, um, this Costa Rican who we picked up, I think, when he was 18. Yeah, in 2029. So I think he's actually going to qualify as being at the club for three years under the age of 21 when it comes to Champions League registration. He is wanted by some clubs. But I would like to keep him around. He's one of my randers in Denmark. I'd like to keep him around because in terms of just generally, he's a solid, solid player. So I'm going to try to hold on. I'm going to try to hold on F1. I, to be honest with you, would like at the end of the season to update very few sales. I would like to say we've held on to most players. So it's going to be interesting to see how that goes. In terms of the B team... Couple of people to mention. The Icelandic left back, who is just a step above anybody, really. We paid 400k for him, and he's still only 17. He's playing for our B team this year at left back. Now he is right and left footed. He's probably going to be a right back for us long term. I do want to get this personality fixed, but apart from that, he could be insane. He really could be insane. Where well, he's playing well at left back. But I think the main thing for the B team I want to point out is the the experienced central defender I brought in to help help control us a little bit better has been our striker this season for the B team, scoring nine goals in ten games with his finishing of two. I just feel like my B team manager is playing him as a striker as part of a meme to like basically say to this division we can win every game even with a striker with two finishing up front. Now, I don't know if you guys remember, there was a striker for Schalke, no, Shakhtar, on all football managers. The Nigerian, I think he was, he only had like five finishing. He was quality. So maybe maybe the manager's been playing an old football manager and he's got in his head he wants to give it a go. I mean, if that's what you want to do, mate, that's what you want to do. Give it a... Who are we? To stand in your way of coming up with these crazy ass ideas. That's what I'm going to say in that situation. So just looking at a couple of the teams in our league going into this season then. Wiegenger Goethe have not sold anyone which is good holding on to players. They signed Kasper Sundström for 7k. Who let's be honest I could have sold them a better player for less. Interrupted for a phone call. One of my kids is at his dad's house and he just called to say goodnight. Um, okay, let's go back. Um, we can go to have signed. Oh no, we didn't look at the other player. Come on, Paul. 100k they've paid for this goalkeeper. 32 years old. I mean, what are clubs doing? Let's have a look at KI and let's hope they've actually spent money a bit better. So they saw one player to Mjold Alden in Norway. They've signed Olsen for half a million from Tromsø. Oh dear. And <laughs> Sunjuska. For 10k. Oh, it just gets worse. And from Vassas for 140k. I, I mean, he's, he's better. He's better. Shall, shall we say that? Let, actually, do you know what? Let's go to the transfers. How The biggest deals. The biggest deals. With Trump's to the KI. Um, Vassas to KI. Okay. He's one of our role players. No, he's not. But he's crap. I want players who have come from, right, Vons to NSI. Yamamoto is a 32-year-old Japanese goalkeeper. Anybody else? Sunyasko KI, we've looked at. Right, Vikinger Goethe, we've looked at. Christian Svensson, save us, Christian. Oh, you crap as well. Let's just go back to the league table. Okay, so if we played 15 games. Oh, the clubs in our league are just so bad at spending money they are so bad uh, one thing I wanted to look at then is we have won 17 league titles in a row now we're looking very very solid the top team in terms of previous titles is it is if I remember correctly KI have 21 then it must be is it let's have a look it's HB with 24 
So we are seven titles away from being the most successful club ever in the Fairlands. Now they have 28 of the Cups. They have 28 of the Cups. How many Cups do we have? We have 14. So we would need to win 14 more before we are overtaking them. them. Okay, we need to be successful by 2050 and convince us to stay there, B. So we can actually become the most successful club in all competitions in the Fair Islands. Um, but our team then going into this season or halfway through the season at this point. Nairn Talon in goal has just been very solid since he came back. 24 games since he rejoined. Linnerud at right back is still our first choice right back. Signed for 3 million four years ago. 25 years old now. Two caps for Norway. He is going to be getting pushed by that young Icelandic in a couple of years, but I'm not rushing through the Icelandic player because there's no reason to, because Linnerud is so solid. But if offers of five million come in for Linnerud, I think we will let him go just because in the B team we've got that Icelandic youngster who is just a class above anybody. At the back then, it's been Pereira rotating with Smith alongside Meng. Meng now is 23 years old, still not capped by Denmark. We are still awaiting paperwork to become a Faroe Islands international. So if he accepted the invite to become a national player for the Faroe Islands, that would be insane. Um, at the left back, we obviously have Hansen, who came back from Olsberg, and just, I'm delighted, 25, I'm delighted he has agreed to come back. In defensive midfield, for most games, it is um, Al Fituri this season. Obviously, last season became a first-team regular. Uh, signed for 3K, and he's just been insane. You can see here, he started in our B team, went on loan to Randers and had a decent season. But then started getting a chance in the first team and he's just took it. He has just took it and he's a very solid halfback. So, really pleased with him. Uh, Turbion um, Sterler, sorry, in centre mid is just a class above anybody. Like, just wow. At 20 years old, we need to do everything we can to hold on to him. Uh, Bjornstad Holger has been our inverted winger on the right hand side 6 star 3 sub appearances, 9 assists from that flank shows he's doing it Mishan in attacking mid who we looked at a million times and mid Skugan on the left with Lidl Scar up top now we do have this Marcelo Viotti who is a squad player contracted we spent 10.5 million on now he does have 9 goals in 9 start 1 sub appearance in the league so he is a decent decent player been playing mid Mainly from the right wing. Um, Schmidt as a rotation backup option of centre back. He's actually better than Pereira, but he's not been playing as well, and that's why at the minute Pereira's become the first choice. Um, and then a couple of other people I want to point out Christensen has just never got back into the first team. He's very much a rotation option. We spent five million on him. He's wanted by Nuremberg. I honestly don't think we'll get our money back from him. I honestly don't think so. He's a lot more days away from getting a Fair Islands international um, ability to at least be capped. Will we hold on to him that long? I'm not sure. He's on a high wage. He's on a high um, expectation as an important player. He's not holding on that position at the club, so we might end up having to let him go. Uh, Inderberg, who we signed for 1.8 million, has really settled well. Seven starts, five goals, seven assists for so far. He's been a very solid player, still only 18. Really pleased with him. Then you have Ahmed Omar, our backup right back, who came back to the club. I did spend big to bring him back, but he's just a very good player, so I'm happy he's back. Gutterson still wants to leave, 27 years old, came through the academy. He's not even getting game time for the B team this year, which is it's upsetting because he is a decent player. Like, he's not a bad central defender if his bloody personality was better anyway. Um, Mark Watson is now 18 years old, joined the club at the start of last season. Um, physically is his issue, he really does need to improve. I've got him worked on his um, quickness, we need Geyser Gilly up as well. 1.4 million for Sonjuska. Breakthrough prospect. I do still have a lot of hope he could become a very good first team player for us. Um, Kilberg's still at the club. I know I saw somebody in the comments saying free Kilberg. I have offered him out on loan. I have said to clubs, do you want him? But 
at the minute nobody's come in for him. 2043's contract runs out. I would rather hold on to him. He's 30 years old now. I just I just like him. I just don't want to sell him. Uh, Riggs Setter is back at the club. If you remember, he pissed me off last year, so we sent him out on loan to Sunyiska, where he's been back now for the last couple of years, and he has started to get a bit of a chance. Hopefully, he can step up and actually improve this year. One star, three sub appearances so far this season, two goals. Uh, Oscar Sundstrom has said he wanted to go out on loan because he want he didn't want to lose the opportunity. He didn't want to fall out of favour with his national team. He's never played a game for the for Sweden, so I don't know what national team he's on about. We are awaiting paperwork for him to become a Faroe Islands international. I am noticing like some of the Danish players, like Michan even. They have been awaiting paperwork for about three years. And I noticed with Cookie it took about three or four years. So I hope that stuff comes through because these type of plays, if they become Faroe Islands internationals, they will take us to the next level. And the final player I want to look at is Martin Jonsson, our youngster. He's still only 16. Five caps for the national team now. He's played two starts, six sub appearances for the our first team this year has gone four goals. He has been injured, but he is normally on the bench and he is getting game time. I'm bringing him on and he's scoring goals. Four goals and eight starts, still only 16. I honestly believe he could be a first team regular. He has the ability. 16 years old, his attributes are there. These need to start improving. The injury hasn't helped, but I have faith that he could be a very, very good player. Now, the next step for me is within a couple of years, I do want to ask to build a new stadium. The new stadium should be able to be built in, um, I think, I think it, officially it's 2054. But I have a feeling maybe we can do it early. I'm not sure because we can't expand it anymore. Doesn't seem to be an option to ask them to expand it, so it must be maxed out. So I think we need to save up money to do that. But at the same time, I want to spend over the next few years. So I'm going to try to find that balance. That if we sell someone for 8 or 9 million, I will spend that money back on the team. And we will try to push on. So by the time it's 2045, we are in the knockout of the Champions League every season. That's my aim. That's my aim to you guys. So I've been Paul, also known as the Northman. Thank you for watching. It means a lot. And I will see you next time.